Today is the 30th uh, lecture of uh, session of this lecture series. And uh, I would like to invite uh, the Vice President, the ESL, Mrs. Kamala Gunwad, to do the welcome. Uh, am I audible, Banduka? Yes, madam. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Banduka, for your <laughs> invitation. And I, I'm pride, actually. I'm really pride in uh, welcoming you all. Uh, especially Professor Tishan Jai Singer, who is helping us all the time. He was uh, he was with the Civil Engineering Section Committee for uh, now continuously three years. Once uh, as the chairman, then he was continuing our lectures. And so now this is the third year. Yeah, as as continuously is uh, so sacrificing his time. If I say like that, I think it's really correct. Uh, devoting his time, doing the papers, doing all the lectures very effectively, and uh, we can we can actually we can there is no 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 issue that we can judge it with the participation of our uh, our participants, the number and the, their enthusiasm to uh, get the things done. So uh, I think uh, I'm really happy to do this uh, honor. Uh, I welcome Professor for the lecture today and also the online participants. So uh, with that, I think this is, uh, you are continuing with the previous lecture, lightweight hybrid multi-story construction. That one, no, Banduka, we are doing? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So we, I think without taking much time, uh, uh, I will welcome everyone to the lecture and have a good day. Uh, Professor, over to you. Yes. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome. So, uh, a very good evening to all of you. Now, uh, last time we started talking about the design aspects of uh, lightweight multi story, multi lightweight hybrid multi story construction with the design of strap system. The strap system. So, today's uh, lecture number 13, that is sixth, 6th March 2024, page 1. So if I recall what we talked last time, we looked at this lightweight system. I explained the way that things happened since Second World War, the historical development, and why people changed to solid straps and flex straps from whip straps. So this is the in-situ cast concrete. And then we looked at this possibility of having a link like this. Because we do not want to have uh, connections only through bond. We always wanted to have a positive connection. So we run an 8 milliliter bar that way. And then we have a bar to lock it. And then we have the top reinforcement for the slab running up to 
CN. So this is two meters. So we can have this top bar over a length of like 600 millimeters. And it's a H8 bar, eight millimeter bar. Here also we'll have a bar like this, above this. Here 600. That is a H8 bar. And uh, we said that the because of all these reinforcement, the slab will behave like this. So we can design the slab for WS part of 10. W S card of 10 and what we showed was even for 5 kilonewtons per meter squared impulse load what we know we want is 1 H8 but we provide 2 H8 this means that we can actually go for even 7.5 kilonewtons per meter squared load on this slab system, provided the beam is strong, has adequate. So that is the scenario. So let's look at a typical application by looking at a house plan of a large house. So that I can show you the real applications. So let's see that. Uh, let's take an example of a house having something like the garage maybe six meters this way and about 6.2 meters this way. Then we have an entrance lobby. And a bedroom. So let's say this is about three meters. This is about Four meters. This about three point five meters, and then we may have the we may have uh, this three point five and one point five, something like this the entrance washroom and this is an arch yeah. then we have the staircase the uh, garden here we have the staircase So this is uh, about another 5.7 meters and on this side let's say we have the 
wet kitchen and a pantry and a bedroom which attach hostel. So let's say these uh, dimensions tally these ones. So these 1.5 and uh, these is about three point five and that is here you get eleven meters six plus seven uh, thirty uh, thirteen meters so it's five meters uh, thirteen minus five so we get three point five four point so let's assume. So I just want to show you the possibility. And uh, here we might have the living area, large living area. So what are the possibilities? First, we'll take this example. One possibility is running this beam this way and having that's this way, two meters. There's a possibility of running the beam other way as well. And then here, if you look at this one, six meters. So we have the possibility of running the beam this way. Having the flaps like that. Here, every two meters, we can run a beam. So, every two meters. So, when I say two meters, you know, we run the slabs. These rooms. We have the possibility of running the slab this way because this is going to be something like four meters. So we run the slab this way. So these are all possibilities. And the washroom we can run this way. Because we need a drop, so here also washroom can be run the other way. So, this, so when you look at this example, we can identify two typical situations. One is the beam is spanning something like 3.52. Three point five meters. Another case is beam is spanning four point five meters. The other possibility is beam is spanning six point, let's say like six, six, six meters as a typical case. So and in a house. The impulse load can be 1.5 kilonewtons per meter squared for bedrooms. Uh, it is 2 kilonewtons per meter squared for uh, living, dining, pantry. And so there isn't a big difference between 1.5 and 2. So for the design of the beam, we can consider something like uh, 2 kilonewtons per meter squared. Manduk, is that clear? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. 
So I'm taking a typical example so that you know we can we can yes. uh, provide the answer for a real case, right? Yeah, that is fine, sir. Right. Okay. Right. So now we have to see. So we'll take the simplest case, a 3.5 meter case, and this page number two of sixth. So if you take a typical case, now another thing that you can uh, observe here is, now these are, this may be a blind wall. That is a blind wall, uh, you can see. All these flaps can span onto the wall. Here also, it can be an opening or whatever, but uh, it can uh, span onto the uh, wall. But uh, here, the chances are, here we'll get a big opening for the cars. So these are the cars. So what are the chances? So we can have a column. Now, when it comes to the column, we have a debate. What is that? Nine inch to 25 by two. 25 column or if you are using uh, this strong block work because we want to make the structure as light as possible, so we can have the standard SLS 855 complying block having a length of 390. This 390. This. 150, height is 190. So a block of this nature, hollow block, will cost you about 150 rupees at the factory. At the factory, it can cost about 150 rupees. And it covers about point, close to point 0.8, close to point 0.9 square foot. Close to 0.9 square feet. Area is covered by each block. So, in a moment, I'll show the cost aspects, but first I'll discuss. Assuming that we are going to use this uh, lightweight material, but the important thing is the compressive strength of these blocks can be about 5 megapascal to 7 megapascal. So when I teach uh, masonry design, how to uh, undertake masonry design for Eurocode 6, you will understand that once the unit length, unit strength is known, generally we use M4 motor. M4 means 4 megapascal motor. So use M4 motor and do the construction, we can get a strength of about 3.5 to 4, depending on the block strength. So, these blocks are, if you use a similar masonry wall out of the type of bricks that are available in our market, the maximum strength we can get is 1.5 megapascal, but with these blocks, we can easily get around 3 megapascal ball strength. So the ball strength is double, but the weight is much lower because these are having holes, hollow blocks. Uh, so the density is 12 kilonewtons per meter. The density is only 12 kilonewtons per meter. So density of the block is 12 kilonewtons per meter. So general density of mason is 20, whereas these blocks has only 12 kilonewtons per meter. So the overall weight of the wall is less, strength is more. So, 
we can run a beam here and support the support this uh, uh, support the the beam can be supported by using two L shaped columns. So these 300. Now the beauty of this L shaped column is it is very strong. It is stronger than 225 by 225 column because it cannot buckle easily. Each side is 300 millimeters. So this side is 300, this side is 300, the area of the column is more than the area of a column like this, the area is more. So it is like the area is equivalent to a Three hundred by two twenty five column area small. So what you find is this particular column has more strength, but most of importantly, it can be flushed with the wall. Wall is hundred. So there's a particular advantage because you can't see the columns. You can't see the columns. So we might run another column here and another column here. Why? Because we might need a beam here. Because this can be a window opening, connecting the garage with the window. Similarly, we might need a column here and a column here and another beam this why this can be a large window open into the garden so wherever there's a big opening we'll use wherever there's whenever there's a big opening we'll use columns So we have a column here. We have a column here. Similarly, we can uh, say because this this outer wall might have a lot of openings. So we can have some columns there. Some columns here. Run a beam here. Why? Because uh, we have uh, columns and large openings, these are openings, large windows, doors. But here we have only small openings. So though above those we can have limits. So we don't we don't need many columns on this wall. And similarly, we might have a big opening here. We might need a column here, run a beam, and we might need running another beam this way, and we might need. A column so that we can run a beam. Now you can see we have few columns, but the beams are run only in one direction. So there's no beam here. No beam. The wall can straight away take the weight of the slabs. And here, no beam. So wall is taking load bearing wall. These are load bearing wall. So these are load bearing wall. These are load bearing wall. Because we don't have any openings on that side. These also load bearing. This side 
these are all can be converted to a load bearing wall if you are going to place the beam this way and run the slabs this way. But in this case, uh, you know, though it can be a load bearing wall, we are not transferring a lot of load to those. Is that clear, Vandukya? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. So basically, we have a lightweight material. And when you look at uh, the vertical load transfer, we have the concrete frame structure partially. What is the rest? Rest is load bearing masonry. So we call it hybrid system. Because in a normal multi story house, we try to transfer most of the loads onto the frame structure. And use mason as a primary as a infill material. But in this particular system, by using a masonry which is strong, very strong, what we do is we are transferring the loads onto the masonry and onto the concrete, and we are sharing the load of a lightweight slab system. We are sharing the weight of a lightweight step system. So, in this lightweight hybrid system, we are using masonry of lower density because masonry has holes, hollow, hollow masonry. But it's super strong. It's, it, it is twice as strong as brickwork. But it needs much less material. So, what is the main problem we have today? The main problem we have today is the cost of sand. Why? In Sri Lanka, we mine the sand in Manampitiya. From the river, sometimes it's mined and it has to be brought over 250 kilometers in lorries, where the maximum the lorry can give is 3 kilometers per liter of diesel. So, if you take one cube of sand, it is rupees 22,000 or about 000. and the transportation, the diesel is around rupees 350. So Close to rupees 125 goes for per kilometer goes for diesel. And then per kilometer cost is about 200. 200 is the per kilometer cost when you consider tire wastage, all the costs. Because sometimes that one tire can cost. Close to 100,000 rupees. So, how much money we spend? 50,000 rupees to bring a big lorry carrying about 4 to 5 cubes. So, you can see why. So, out of this, a street value of 110,000 for 5 cubes, 50 to 60,000 goes to about 50,000 to 60,000 goes for world. 
tire wastage. Salaries. So when you look at all these things, sand is priced as rupees. 22,000 a cube per cube, one cube is 2.8 meter cubes. So one meter cube has a cost of 2.8. What is the cost of uh, one cube? Twenty-two thousand. Yeah, uh, seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Rupees. And one meter cube has a fan has a bulk density. These are the solid material we buy. We buy the bulk material. One thousand five hundred kilograms per meter cube. So one kilogram of sand. What is the price? What is the price of one kilogram of sand? One kilogram of sand is about five rupees. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, five point two four. Yeah. So let's say we after allowing for wastage, five fifty. Because when we say we are buying one meter cube, we might not get it fully. So we can say the cost is about 550 rupees per, per kilogram. Per kilogram. Now you can see the crisis in the construction industry. We pay 550 rupees per kilogram of sand. Can you see the problem, Bandukum? Yes, yes, sir. And out of this 550, about 4 rupees goes for transportation. That we never thought. Right. So we have a huge crisis. And then what we do is we try big work. We try bricks. So what is the size of a brick? We have non-standard bricks. About 100 millimeters wide, 50 millimeters thick, 200 millimeters long. Try this small. Try this small. The standard brick should have a height of 65, but here we have only 50 minutes. So now we try to do the brick work. So we get around 15 millimeter, 10 millimeter mortar. And it's customary to have the English bond. And we run the next layer. So with this size, we need about 15 bricks for 220 millimeter wall, maybe 210, 15 bricks for 220 millimeter wall at rupees 25.
plus motor. So 25 into 15, come to 375 rupees plus motor cost or labor cost. When you add all that, one square meter of brickwork can cost about 9,000 rupees. Whereas, if you look at this lightweight block work, the block has a cost of 150. So it needs about 175 rupees, 175 per square foot, plus another about 50 rupees worth of mortar, plus another 150 rupees construct. So you can see it comes to about 250, 225, 325, 375, 400. So one meter squared of 150 millimeter block follow block. What is the cost? Maybe 4,500. So here we get. 50% saving with 3 mega 3 kilonewton 3 megapascal compressive strength Three megapascal compressors. That will allow hybrid construction. And our, we are using our lightweight slab. So we have lightweight, hybrid, but we can go for multi-store. Up to four floors. So you can see, we can achieve a very significant cost saving. But the problem with brickwork is, brickwork has so many joints. And how people generally apply filler mortar on both sides. Make it level. So when you do that, we need a plaster. Very difficult to do the plaster for 20, 15 millimeters. We generally do the plaster for 15 millimeters. Very difficult to do it for half an inch, it's a little more, so we need about 15 minutes. Why? Because we have so many joints, while constructing, though we try our best to construct it as vertical as possible, what happens is the brickwork tends to deform a little while the construction goes on until it hardens. So, You'll find, even if you have constructed the wall almost perfectly, one problem is there's a lot of mortar. So here you get mortar, here you get mortar, here you get mortar, here you get mortar. Every mortar. So a lot of sand goes, a lot of cement goes. So you find the cost of construction is very high, around 9,000 rupees per square meter. Whereas, 
in the block work we can reduce it to about 4500 or sometimes even lesser so how do we do this uh, block work construction block has off so we we turn the block upside down because in this block bottom is solid so we have this bottom is solid so what we do is we turn it upside down so what you see is a solid block when you turn it upside down because hollow part is here so hollow part is here. Hidden. Then what you do is you lay it on a mortar bed. Thickness is about fifteen millimeters, or it can be slightly more. Then after making it level, plumb. After checking the verticality, we take use a about. 300 millimeter long a joist 50 by 50 and we give a blow to the center blow to the center what happens these were wet mortar m4 mortar that is capable of generating a strength of 4 megapascal with 1 is to 5 cement sand what happens this water will squeeze into the holes in the block and lock it lock the block into the well compacted M4 mode. So what do you get? You get a strong block, strong wall. Because of this locking, not much buckling. Deformation, during construction. So the block wall will be very straight. So if you look at this plaster, 15 millimeter plaster. They charge about 75 rupees per square foot. And it costs about 75 rupees for material as well. So plastering two faces can cost about 3,000 rupees per square meter. Or 150 rupees per square foot. On that, you have to do all the finishes. But here, we are getting a wall almost perfectly vertical. And what you do is, while constructing, you will add use the sponge and you know first you use the plane and level it and then use a sponge and make it a perfect wall so that it will be ready to receive a thin plast of 3 millimeter. So there is a cement, place, uh, cement based plaster 
manufactured with the research done in Sri Lanka by a very innovative person called Sir Dhammika from Padukka. And he, he sells this as Mako Super Plaster, which can be completed for a thickness of 3 to 4 millimeters and these dolomite pastes. This dolomite paste. <clears throat> so we actually helped him with the when you are doing research at Department of Civil Engineering because we saw the huge potential in his products. So this can bring a 20 kilogram bag costing about 1000 to 150 purchased directly can cover about 40 square feet giving a cost of 30 rupees per square foot which is a significant reduction from 150 so you get 150 versus 30 rupees and there will be only a small, this is coverage is small, so the labor cost is less. So 300 rupees can be brought to about 100, 125 in the range of 125 to 100. So you can get a saving of more than 50%. <coughs> is that clear, Bandhuka? Yes, that, that is clear, sir. So you can see in this system, we are saving wherever possible. <clears throat> First, we use lightweight blocks. Blocks. But they are load bearing method. Having a strength of 3 megapascal <coughs> or more of wall strength. Number two, we use a lightweight subsystem <coughs> precast subsystem. Strap thickness ninety millimeters, and if you want, you can finish it with terrazzo finish, or you can make it so that with the overall thickness of hundred millimeters. <coughs> You can complete the tiles. So, including the tiles, the thickness will be 100 to 110 millimeters. So, it's a significant departure from flaps of 125 to 150, 25 millimeters of leveling street, and then tiles giving about 12 to 15 millimeters we tie back a huge departure from an overall thickness of say 125 plus 25 plus 15 that gives 165 millimeters or it can go up to 150 plus 25, plus 15, 180 millimeters. So an overall thickness of 165 to 180 is reduced to 100 to 100. So can you see why we call it a lightweight system? 
Mandugar. So sets are lightweight. But some of the steps can be directly supported by the Lord bearing gods. Can be directly supported by the Lord bearing gods. So you can see so that's number two. So we have light rate steps, we have walls, and we have frame. Carrying vertical loads, walls, carrying vertical loads from steps. So we call it hybrid. Because it's lightweight, three megapascal is sufficient to bear the load of up to four steps. The weight of up to four steps can be taken by these walls. Why? One is it overall thickness is 110 millimeters. So 110 multiplied by 25 plus multiplied by 1.35 plus 2.0 into 1.5. What is the value? Uh, sorry. 0 0.110 into 25 multiplied by 1.35 plus 2 into 1.5. What is the value, Vanduka? 0.110 into 25 multiplied by 1.35. So we are trying to find 1.35 GK plus 1.5 UK. 6.7. 6.7 kilo newtons per meter squared. Let's say this comes to about 7 kilo newtons per meter squared. Is that okay? So we'll assume. Okay. But, but when you look at a wall, 150 thick. This is the precast lab. This is in situ cast. But there's a beam here. The span is 2 meters. So, how that load goes here? So, at each floor level, the wall carry self weight, and in addition to that, it can carry seven kilo newtons per meter. Then again, it will carry the self weight. Then again, it will carry seven kilo newtons per meter. So you can see. This hybrid system can easily go up to supporting four steps. Why? If we have a normal load bearing system, we might have a load of about nine kilonewtons per meter squared. We have a load bearing wall, load bearing wall. This may be about four meters. So half of this load goes there. So that means at every floor level, we are transferring about 18 kilonewtons per meter. So even with that, we can easily go for two stores. But in this particular system, we have reduced the load on the wall up to 7 kilonewtons per meter. 
So because of that reason, we can easily use the system to go up to four floors and even sometimes if you have done the construction carefully, you will find you can maintain a factor of safety above four with the with five slabs with five slabs. So which means you have a house, ground floor, first floor slab, second floor slab, third floor slab, fourth floor slab, and even a roof slab can be supported. So this hybrid system is very efficient because of this particular slab system. Not like a solid slab, it transfers loads into both directions, but those loads are very lightly, lightweight loads. Is that clear, Vandupar? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. So the other advantage is the cost is like this. It cost the beam. The slab you connect it, finish it with terrazzo, or we finish it with tiles directly on this. So if there's a minor variations. We can actually use a terrazzo cutter and cut it and then fix the tiles. If there's a little bit of unevenness, you can cut it with the terrazzo cutter and then fix the tiles. Or give the terrazzo finish with marble and broken windscreen pieces and all those things. And we can give, we can get a nice finish. Or else we can fix tiles directly on it. And what we can do is we can use the, this thin plaster as a soffit. Four millimeter plaster instead of soffit plaster because it's a putty. It can be cement based, putty, not lime based. We can give a huge coverage. So we know soffit plaster. Cost of labor is high because doing a soffit plaster takes much longer than doing a normal plaster on a vertical surface because we have to do it hanging. So the labor cost for soffit plaster is much higher, but here we are using a putty, which means it takes much less time to cover the walls, cover the soffit, cover the walls. So it's super fast, uh, huge saving in labor is possible. So if you look at this versus conventional, conventional slab, we have the street, 25 millimeters, Generally, you know, even if you try to get 20, it's very difficult because masons generally say they are more comfortable with 25 millimeters because they don't do the slab properly. So this is 125 to 150 meters. And then we have the tiling. And then we have a soffit plaster of another 10 millimeter. We have 10 millimeter soffit plaster then you will might have, but sometimes you can avoid soffit plaster if you go with plywood shutters. Or steel shutters. So that possibility is there. And then we have the tiling. So if you are using a 
macro super plus type of thing there is no cost penalty on the soffit side of this system there is no cost penalty it's like using plywood form or steel shutters and so in this system when you are casting there is no shutter because the panels are precast except props we need props because i told you during the construction we like it to be supported in the middle each panel to be supported in the middle so we need some props but we don't need a shutter so there are this lightweight system is efficient not because it's light but it doesn't need shuttering as well so in that sense also it can bring about a safety it can bring about a safety so if you look at the overall situation if you look at the overall situation we save on the slab lightweight wall lightweight columns built into the wall so no special plastering for columns no special plaster for columns otherwise plastering a column is also costly item but column is built into the wall so no special plastering <clears throat> then walls are load bearing then walls no thick plaster only a thin plaster only a thin plaster so we save a lot on this then how about the roof roof slab roof slab let's see how to do the roof slab because roof slabs we know a lot of waterproofing and all those things but in this system what we can do is we can enlarge the beam and make it behave as a rectangular beam and separate the slab and have a bitumen sheet separate the slab from the beam and then we complete it like this so the slab is free to expand and contract and even when it is supported on a wall we will have a small lintel so that the wall will be separated from the the masonry wall the slab is separated from the slab be separated from the wall and on top of the wall we have a lintel but roof slab what is the biggest problem he transfer but why do you need a roof slab why why do you need a roof slab why can't you have a roof we like roof slab because we build on 152 250 square meter lands or six perch 
to 10 per inch lens. We build on these. So once you do that, so they are generally subdivided like this. So this is the road. This is narrow, about 10 to 12 meters. And <coughs> we'll have a rear space. It's a must. We have to keep three meters at the rear. So if it is a subdivided land, there's no building line. So we can bring the garage up to this level. But you need to keep one meter distance here. And so you can bring the house up to that level. If it is subdivided land. Otherwise, if it's facing a main road, you'll have a street line and a building line. So the building line is only one meter if it is subdivided land, like auction land. So we have very little space for garden. So many people like rooftops. But rooftops give a lot of trouble. So how to minimize the trouble given by rooftops? That is the important question. So separate it. With a bitumen sheet, separate it. Have the slab. So all the roofs leak because of lack of drainage. So we start with 60 to 70 millimeters. We finish it 40 to 45 millimeters. We create the drainage part with concrete. The moment you create drainage path with concrete, we have rains lasting maximum of two to three hours. All the rainwater is drained properly. You don't get a big waterproofing problem. That is avoided by providing good drainage. But still, it can absorb heat during the daytime. So there are two options. One is have a white color flow paint. On the white color flow paint, you can apply water-based varnish. You can apply water-based varnish. So the white color surface can be washed if it is dirty. The moment you apply, make it white color, what happens? You will absorb less heat, you know, the absorption becomes 20%. And cement color absorption can be about 55%. So reduce and minimize the amount of heat transfer. But there's a, another very useful solution. And that solution is actually have a greenhouse. So the concept is we have a slope-in roof, tracks of it, separated. There's a bitumen sheet, which is a, not a very good thermal conductive material. 
So this uh, slab is free to expand and contract. And we can create PVC pipes, we can create small greenhouses. With a zip here, so that you can open it, open the zip and go in and attend to all your plants. And the concept of small greenhouses, rather than creating big greenhouses, you create a number of small greenhouses like two meter by two meter. The moment you do that, and then part can be covered with solar panels. Likewise, you know, you can create, or you can use a big concrete cylinder with a base and plant some trees. So all those are possible. So that you can create a nice garden on the rooftop because this system is capable of carrying loads up to 10 kilonewtons per meter squared. Because one of the biggest problems we face with slabs is, sorry, slabs is, they are not very good in carrying loads. They cannot carry up to 10 kilonewtons per meter squared. Whereas this can. So we create this system. Because it can carry up to seven. If you lay a polythene and lay a thin layer of soil, you can create a garden on the roof without having any durability issues. Because uh, the roof is laid in a slope, then you get thick polythene. And then cover it with soil. Or Cover it with large pots. So, what is the penalty? To support the, all these big loads, we need a deeper beam at every two meters. So, the normal beam may be this size. This may be about 50 to 100 millimeters extra. That is the only penalty. And you might find that uh, instead of 2H12 plus 2H10, you might need 2H, 4H12, something like that. Slightly, slightly more reinforcement in the beam. So one of the biggest problems we faced with roof slabs was Rooftops are not capable of carrying big loads. But with the calculations we have shown, the system with two numbers of H8 bars can easily carry 5 kilometers per meter squared. It needs only one bar. You are probably two bars, which means it can easily carry up to 10 kilonewtons per meter squared. So, Without any fear, by strengthening the beams, you can create a nice rooftop garden because we lose most of the land for the house. So we don't have land. So we create a land at the rooftop because we have a very strong system. What do you think, Bandugan? Yes, that's correct, sir. That yes. is correct. So that is the future. But what is the most important advantage? The moment you go for a roof slab, it is cyclone resistant. Why? It's heavy. Heavy in the sense, not very heavy. But it has a weight of around three kilonewtons per meter squared. But what is the maximum suction that a cyclone can induce? Maybe about one kilonewton per meter squared. 
the maximum suction that a cyclone can induce is about 1 kN per minute. Even if it goes up to 1.5, still the roof is much more heavier than the uplifting. So automatically you get cyclone resistant building. And so this lab can give a solution to climate change. Why? With the climate change, to face the climate change, what is the best solution? Trees. On one side, they absorb carbon dioxide. On the other side, they add oxygen. And in addition, they provide shade. So the solution to climate change is given by this lightweight sap system because it can be designed to carry 10 kN per meter squared. So without any problem, you can very easily create a rooftop garden with access without needing waterproofing because you can rely on polythene laid on the roof, inclined roof. The only the top surface is inclined if you are going to lay soil on it. On the other hand, if you are going to use pots, then you don't need any polythene or anything. You can directly support the pots with the bottom on, with a large bottom on the concrete slab. And it, it has good drainage properties. If you cure it properly, you can get a very good, very high level of uh, very high strength, impervious surface. And if you apply a water-based varnish on it, then it will not absorb any water either. So, and then you can create some shade either in the form of greenhouses, which would be much more effective than using soil because uh, greenhouses are not... When you grow vegetables in greenhouses, carrots cannot attack the crop. Because one of the biggest problems in Sri Lanka is parrots steal in the crop. So that also can be minimized to a great extent. So now you can see the biggest challenge is designing the beam, designing the beam. Because slab is not a problem, slab is not a challenge, slab is a gift. The challenge is the challenge is the beam. Beam is a challenge. So next time, next week. We look at the how to design the bee and how to make it as optimum as possible and what are the theories for rooftop supporting beam versus beam supporting an ordinary flow stack. And also, if somebody needs a flat soffit, we talk about how best we can achieve a flat soffit as well. Is that clear, Bandhuka? Yes, that is clear, sir. So we'll, uh, because we need a lot of time for explaining the beams, so we'll postpone the beams to next week, okay? Okay, sir. Right. Um, so how yes, about the questions? Yes, sir. So how can we reduce heat radiation on, under the roof? That's one question. Yeah, that's what I said, I mean, Shading is the best way. So shading can come in the form of uh, large concrete pots filled with soil because this uh, slab has no restriction in carrying loads. So we can have heavy loads as long as the beam has been designed for that. So. 
we can easily have uh, large pots with uh, soil filled in it so basically we need some kind of shading so it can be solar panels it can be uh, greenhouses it can be uh, flower pots or pots whatever we what we need is some kind of shading device on the on the roof so that we can minimize the solar gains so because the roofs have been separated from the beams there's no positive connection the thermal contraction and uh, expansion and contraction can take place readily so there are two options to minimize the solar radiation if you if you are not going to access the roof very often we can paint it with brilliant white and then we it can be a floor paint or even uh, immersion would do provided we cover it with a water based varnish like jet holding varnish or nicolac varnish so they will all uh, this gives a thin thin layer you know when you are painting vehicles after applying the paint we apply a thick coat of lacquer two coats of lacquer so similarly here also we apply a protecting coat the moment you do that the heat transfer will be minimal okay bandhuka okay sir that is clear and also uh, there is one question uh, we can use a lightweight hybrid system for maximum five cells but if we need multi story more than four oh, floors yeah. that's a what good can question. be the solution if it, actually this is a system that can go up to 12 floors so what is the penalty what is the problem what is the problem what is what is restricting so restricting is you know we have gone for 150 wall follow concrete so why can't we go for 200 mm in the lower floors and these 200 block then this lay 90 200 wide it has thicker walls the walls are thicker see our group walls are thicker so these out of concrete Chip concrete. Say, let's say you need eight megapascal block. Then you can request a company like ICC. What they do? You, they have to provide you with eight megapascal block, and you can use in foam mortar. One is to five cement sand. So here you can buy mix river sand with manufactured sand. The manufactured sand also can have a little bit of fossilinic reaction to get a very high, very strong mortar. and now what you do is you go up to eight floors first four floors you use ground more ground floor you might use eight mega pascal block because it can be slightly more expensive because uh, what they do is they use more cement and somewhere here you might use five mega pascal block because it's Strong. Then later you use five megapascal block of hundred fifty thickness. So my perception is we are doing some research on this because there are undergraduate projects running to determine the maximum number of floors. So one project is eight to twelve story range. Another one is four to 
eight story range another one is up to four story range four story i have done but you know to this project is done to document all the everything properly so that it can be presented at research papers maybe research papers on engineering or international conferences held in sri lanka or whatever so that uh, the whole uh, engineering community will be able to uh, make use of the available information so have i answered the question uh, banduga yes yes sir it's right. clear yeah it's clear right okay so so basically you can see this is a wonderful system because it saves in many ways number one it saves it is less material so it can give about 50% saving because it needs less steel less concrete less formwork so that is the lightweight slab system secondly reduce the number of steps that means no leveling street street no leveling street number 3 we use we rely on concrete to carry load in color of l shape why l shape column has more concrete more concrete area it does not buckle easily hence we need on a nominal so you can use 10 mm bus in columns so the column goes like this so you need a link like this we need another link that can go like this we need two more bars here we tie the link with binding wire here binding only so need needs five numbers of 10 mm bars it needs five numbers of 10 mm bars so here number 1 2 3 why we can use 10 mm bars is the minimum steel content is 0.2% in euro codes and euro codes also allow 10 mm bars in 10 mm bars in columns and these are lightly loaded lightly loaded because we are not relying on the column alone to carry all the loads we have hybrid system so we can consider these columns as lightly loaded and go for a minimum amount of reinforcement in the columns whereas in uh, normal two three story building designs you try to transfer all the slab loads onto columns so you, you can it's very easy to see 
engineers using 16 millimeter bars or 12 millimeter bars are not in columns. But here, what you get is only 10 millimeter bars and uh, you can use 8 millimeter links at 20 times diameter spacing. So when you use 10 millimeter bars, 8 millimeter links can be used at 200 millimeter centers. 200 millimeter centers. And so what you do is when you are do, you're doing the column reinforcement, so this is the flow. Is up the flow, the column, egg shaped column. We provide four numbers H8 because the uh, Euro code says steel must be YK should be 600. So, so if you are doing a strictly for Euro code, you are to use H8. But if you are doing the columns for British port, then you can even use uh, my steel six millimeter bars. But uh, the cost penalty is not very big, so you can use this. Beyond this, 200 centimeters. These bars are 10 millimeter. Again, here you will have four bars at Something like 50 to 75 spacing. What is the reason? If it is subjected to an earthquake, this is a frame subjected to earthquake, where do you get the plastic hinges from? And in the beam, you can get it here. So in the zone that the plastic hinges can form, be provided higher confinement. So we create a triaxial stress state. The moment you create a triaxial stress state, If you test a cube, uniaxial, it goes like this. Triaxial, it goes like this. And we know this is a stress strain curve. Stress strain curve. So the area under the curve is the energy that the concrete can absorb before before it crashes. So the moment you create triaxial stress state, it can absorb a huge amount of energy so that we can prevent crushing of concrete by increasing the confinement. And H8 bars are very good for enhanced confinement because they don't yield easily. So they can confine the concrete and keep it. So we have a very light, high, very lightweight, lightly loaded columns, but with high ductility. Anyway, in an earthquake, lightweight structures absorb less initial. So earthquake loads will be less and if you look at the plan what you see is walls everywhere. So all these walls will be shear walls. So what can you say about the earthquake induced 
deformation, lateral deformation, very small because it's not easy to push a masonry wall that is heavily loaded and strong. Masonry is a strong material because we are using very strong masonry. It's loaded, masonry is loaded fully. Then it's very hard to fail a masonry wall because what happens is in an earthquake situation, in an earthquake situation, what happens is we have a frame, we have an infill, we have a beam, beam or a slab. So we have the columns. Now we are pushing. So what happens? Measure will go into tension. Compression in one direction, tension in the other direction. So tension in the masonry can cause cracks. But seville loaded. Moment is heavily loaded, these cracks cannot open. And then the frame will start to move like this. So the mason here will be subjected to heavy stress. But we are using a concrete block. Having 5 megapascal or above. So it's a concrete block. No mortar joints. Very few mortar joints. Even those mortar joints are well compacted. Because I told you we are going to tap it with 2 by 2 joist. 2 inch by 2 inch joist. We tapped it. We compact it fully. All these levels, it's compacted. So it's a very strong wall. So what happens is when you apply the lateral loads, because masonry is loaded vertically, the deformation of the masonry wall will be minimum. So the movement of the building will be minimum. If the movement of the building is minimum, there's no way the concrete can crush because the strains in the plastic hinges will be very small. So by providing enhanced confinement, we can make the columns extremely ductile and hence they can absorb huge amount of energy before the concrete crushes. Is that clear, Mandukar? Yes, that is clear, sir. Right. So with that, shall we conclude? Okay, sir. Okay. Mm, thank you very much, sir, for your commitment in conducting this lecture series. And uh, I believe this lecture series has a remarkable lecture series in our community for those who are interested in value engineering and cost-effective house construction technology. The questions and the responses from participants uh, tell about that. And also our YouTube uploads related to this lecture series are reaching thousands of views. So that is also uh, telling us that uh, we have we are spreading the message. So thank you very much for sir for that. And also yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Vice President and uh, Engineer Mrs. Kamala Gunawardena for your presence today. And also the Chairman Civil Engineering Section of Committee, Engineer Mangala Silva. Uh, who is guiding and giving leadership for this lecture series for this year. Thank you very much, sir. And also, I would like to thank uh, the ISS Secretariat, the Publicity Department, and the IT team for their support in hosting arrangements. Thank you very much. And also, I would like to thank all the participants uh, for their pa continuous participation. That means a lot, and it is very important for the success of this lecture series. Thank you very much. And good night to all. Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.